In this video, we're going to do an example where the function f of x is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 2, and we have to find f of prime x, or the derivative of this function. So to find that derivative, f of prime x, we're going to use the definition of a derivative that we went over in the overview video, which is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So then simplifying this more, f of x plus h, we would just plug in x plus h for the x values in the function. So we end up with x plus h plus 2 over x plus h minus 2. So I just took this x plus h here and plugged it in for the x values in the function. And then the plus 2 minus 2 is in the function as well. And then minus f of x, well f of x is just defined as x plus 2 over x minus 2. And then this is all over h. Now notice how we can't plug in this h value of 0 because the denominator will be 0. So as we've mentioned many times before, our goal is to get rid of that h in the denominator. Now to get rid of this h, we're going to have to do some algebra. And the algebra in this specific question for this specific function is going to be pretty crazy. So brace yourselves. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to take both of these fractions that we are subtracting in the numerator and put them into one fraction. And to do that we need a common denominator. So notice how the common denominator would be these two expressions multiplied by each other. So we'd have x plus h minus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. So that would be the common denominator. Now, because we multiplied this x plus h minus 2 by x minus 2, we have to multiply the numerator by that as well. So we'd have x plus h plus 2 times x minus 2. And then since this portion here, this x plus 2, or this, uh, sorry, this denominator of x minus 2, we multiplied by x plus h minus 2, we have to multiply that numerator x plus 2 by this expression x plus h minus 2 as well. So we'd have x plus 2 times x plus h minus 2. So these two fractions subtracted is equal to this big fraction here. And then this big fraction in the numerator is still all over h. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take that numerator in the big fraction and then expand it all out and then simplify it. So for example, when we multiply these two brackets, this x is gonna have to multiply by the x and negative two. This h is gonna have to multiply by the x and the negative two. And then this two here is gonna also have to multiply by the x and negative two. And then same thing there. So when we multiply these two brackets here, this is what we would end up with. So this expanded expression here is what these two brackets multiplied by each other are. And then similarly, if we expand these two brackets here, we would end up with this expression here. Now, when you multiply these, make sure you keep the brackets here in front of that negative because it's like you're subtracting that whole expression there. And then this is still all over that denominator of x plus h minus 2 all over x minus 2. And then this whole thing is still all over that h value. So basically we just took this numerator and expanded it. So at this point it's getting pretty ridiculous with the algebra, but a positive aspect of this is a lot of things are going to cancel out. So if you notice, this negative 2x and this positive 2x, those will cancel out. And then in this bracket here, this positive 2x and this negative 2x will cancel out. And then if we distribute that negative inside the bracket, all these signs will change. And then what would happen is this x squared and this x squared will cancel out. This xh and this xh will cancel out and this negative four, and then when we subtract that negative four here, it becomes a positive four, those would cancel out as well. So then continuing this up here, when we simplify that numerator, all we're left with is this negative two h minus this two h, which gives us negative four h up here in the numerator. And then we're still left with that denominator of x plus h minus two over x minus two. And then we still have to divide this whole expression by this h. However, instead of dividing it by h, this h is like over 1, 
let's instead multiply it by 1 over h. And then when we do that, notice how these h's now cancel out. And now we can plug in 0 for h. The only h that's left over is this h in the denominator. So this h would go to 0, and we would just be left with negative 4 over x minus 2 times x minus 2. And then x minus 2 times x minus 2 we can rewrite as x minus 2 squared. So that there represents the derivative of this function f of x here, x plus 2 over x minus 2. So to better explain what we can actually do with this derivative function of this function here, I took this function x plus 2 over x minus 2 and I graphed it. Hopefully you remember how to graph rational functions from advanced functions. But there's this vertical asymptote at an x value of 2 and there's a horizontal asymptote at a y value of 1. So let's say that we have this function here and I want to find the slope of the tangent at this x value of 3. So if we draw a tangent at that x value of 3, it's this blue line here. And to find the slope of it, we just have to plug in that x value of 3 in the derivative function. So we would basically be finding f of prime 3. So if we plug that 3 in for the x value here, we'd have 3 minus 2, which is 1, 1 squared is 1, and we'd end up with negative 4. So this here means the slope of the tangent at an x value of 3, the slope of this blue line, is equal to negative 4. Four. So writing it in a sentence, f of prime 3 equals negative 4 is the same as saying the slope of the tangent on the function f of x at an x value 3 is negative 4. Now let's say that uh, we want to find the slope of the tangent instead at an x value of negative 3. So right here. Well if we draw a tangent at that x value negative 3 on the function, it's going to be this blue line here. And to find the slope of that blue line, we would just plug in that x value of negative 3 in the derivative again. So f prime negative 3, if we plug in negative 3 here, we'd have negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5, and then negative 5 squared is 25. So the slope is negative 4 over 25. So this slope here, add an x value negative 3 on the function is equal to negative 4 over 25. Now, a couple of things to know with these two slopes. Number one, they're both negative, and realize that in the graph, these slopes are negative as well, because from left to right, the y values are decreasing. Also notice how this slope, negative 4, is a lot steeper than this slope of negative 4 over 25, and we can see that with the diagram as well. So then showing this in a sentence, f of prime negative 3 equals negative 4 over 25, just basically means the slope of the tangent on the function at an x value of negative 3 is equal to negative 4 over 25. So that's what a derivative does for you. Basically at any x value you could plug it in and you can find the slope of the tangent on that function at that specific x value. So I thought I would show this visually just to make the concept go into your brain a little bit better. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.